Evening. Yes, it's Thursday the twenty fifth of April. I have to think then. Not much has happened from what I understand. I've been browsing the internet, I I was like coming on because I was actually going for a Facebook page and uh, some interesting thing on there, but it's, it's a lot of repeat. Um, So I don't know what to think. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> There's just a lot of um back and forth about the um uniting of all three of them, right? I didn't say much about it at the beginning because I knew it wouldn't come to anything. There's no way Katie is going to unite and talk with Seth. She didn't do that in the beginning, even before Sebastian went missing. She only spoke to him then if he needed a new pair of shoes or he needed some new glasses or something like that. She never spoke to him before, otherwise. He even said he didn't go in their home. He waited in the car for Sebastian to come home from school. Why? 
he didn't want to speak to Katie. He didn't want anything to do with Katie. So why now would they join? Why now would she start talking to me? He will start talking to her. Put his differences aside. If it means find, pardon me, finding his son. But we know she won't. So, and Chris, he only wants to join in this because you, we all know how he likes to be kept in the frame. He likes to know what's going on. Now, if Seth's got a boy, which we know he has, and he's also got an um, attorney now, right? So, if he's got a PI, she's going to be finding information out, maybe before the police. Right? And I suppose, I should imagine, if she gets any credible information, she would report to TBI or law enforcement. Right? But, to Chris, that is not on. He wants to know exactly what's going on, when it's happening, where it's happening, how it's happening. He needs to know everything. He don't want to be the second or third or fourth or fifth person to find out. And people like that will push themselves into investigations, throw up a red flag with me. You know what I mean? What don't they understand about an investigation? You're not going to be told nothing. It's an investigation. No one gets told anything. It's an investigation. So when someone is pushing themselves into an investigation or wanting to know information about what your PI has found, then that throws up a red flag. He proved it last night. I showed the video. I didn't show it all. But I showed you part of that video with the phone call on to Nark to Trey. Trey, who's not who's part of Nark Divers. How I, I went on they took me on a, a drive around. I'm the only one they did it with. How how sickening is that? Could his ego not get any bigger? So, it's like he knows everything law enforcement is saying and doing. But Seth don't know feck all. Seth is the biofather, but he's not being told nothing. Because it's an investigation. So why is Chris being told everything? Why is uh, Katie being told everything? Because Chris has a pull. His family have connections with law enforcement. And this is why I believe, like Seth, FBI need to step in. Because something is seriously wrong here. Seriously wrong. Or they need a new sheriff who's got the cojones to stand up to these, um, this family and say, you know what, I don't care who you are. I don't care how many, how much money you got, how many businesses you run. I don't care. If you're involved in this, you're going down. Full stop. You know what I mean? We need someone like that to stand up to this family once and for all. How many things have they got away with? Look how they treated Nina. You know what I mean? Being on the day she she had she went to collect her daughter outside the police station, and the law enforcement wasn't even going to help her to her car. Her own attorney had to phone speak to them and say, "Look, walk her to her car, make sure she gets in it safely, and she drives away safely." You know what I mean? No, an attorney shouldn't have to phone the, the law enforcement up and tell them how to do their job. But he did. He had to because she couldn't get her out. She couldn't get into her car. He tried to run her over the first time, 
by reversing back while she's putting a little one into the car seat. And she's telling the two older, the two other children to jump out the car, just jump out the car. And they, they unbuckled and jumped out the car. They could have got hurt doing that, but the mother would rather take the chance of that than them being stuck in a car with a maniac like Chris. So... And I see a lot of people saying, I hope the police are watching this, are reading these, and hold on, reading all these comments and watching, going through Facebook and going through YouTube and seeing, like the nudging in that interview she done, when he mentioned the fact that Seth lived in Clarksville, she nudged him, she elbowed him. Now he has that uh, <coughs> cough signal and she has the elbow nudge signal. And someone mentioned in the interview she did with Nancy Grace, he must, <laughs> they reckon he must have knocked her foot under the table because she looked down. Now that wouldn't surprise me either. They've got all these little signals they do between each other. So, they just make me sick, I'm sorry. And people say, what if they're not guilty? What if they're not guilty? Please, someone prove me wrong if they're not guilty. And I will publicly come on my page an issue and an apology. Not a heartfelt apology, but an apology. So, like, just like to say to KP and CP, I'm sorry. And that would be it. That would be it. I'm sorry. But I can't see that happening. Because Katie was the last one to see Sebastian. Right? Now, I'm sure if Seth, uh, some Seth, Chris was at that house, unless he had his um, track hat turned off, the police would know he was at that house. There would be door ring, ring doorbell footage, home security footage, something of him driving past or pulling away from the house. There'd be something of a car. It's easy to miss a child. Okay, I'll give them that. But a car, no. They'd see a car going past. So, I don't know. But it's, I don't think Chris was there. Not at nine o'clock on a Sunday night. And then there's this other person coming out. We've got another wacko, another wacky. Right? <laughs> now, I, in a way, I can sort of believe this, but I don't believe it. I believe there was a hangover. But I don't believe it was at this time, just before 6am. I believe it was about... Because it'd be on ring doorbell then. The neighbours would have it on their ring doorbell that her car left the house before 6am. Right? So, apparently... Uh, it says, I've got, uh, it's, it goes something like, uh, Kathy, or, what was it, Chris's mum has Sebastian. I've got video proof of Sebastian getting into her car at 6, uh, 5.58 in the morning. Joe Proof, why are you putting it on here? Why don't you go to law enforcement, TBI, FBI? Do that. Why keep coming out and saying, I've got this evidence, I've got, I know something you don't know. I don't care. Give it to law enforcement, give it to TBI. We don't care. Unless you already have given it to them like months ago. 
such as 60 days ago, well, 59 days ago, right? So unless you've already given this information to law enforcement and TBI, then we don't care. We don't believe you. What was his name? Ken something? I'll see if I can find it. It was on. Hmm, I can. It was on a Facebook page. Well, I know what Facebook, but I think it was. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was on a YouTuber. It came up on a YouTuber. I'll, fi I'll try and find that clip. Just that clip. Right? Because I'm sitting there and I'm watching it. And I'm thinking, really? You got another wacko? Hi. What's it called? I'll try and find it for you because it is ridiculous. I think it's a yeah. It's pretty tough. Oh, come on. Hmm. It wasn't that far, did he? Mm -hmm. Ah! Pause it, pause it, pause it. Pause it. I'm just going to show you this. Right? Uh, because in my eyes, it's just another wacko coming out. I said you'll get them. We will get them. This is just the second of many. Uh -huh. Just the second one of many. Well, we had one saying uh, that um, this is sister Hatton. It is, it says, it's from Ken Davis. His mother has him. We have video evidence. He got into a SUV on the 26th at 5.58 a.m. Come on. Come on. How many more wackos do we have to get, take before law enforcement or TBI or even FBI? Please do something because this is driving us crazy. This poor lad is out there somewhere. I hope and pray he's alive. I do. I have to stand on the positive and hope and pray he's alive. We've got no evidence he's, he's not he's alive, and we've got no evidence he is alive. Right? So we've got to stand on the positive. We have to be. We have to hope. Hope is all we've got. That is Sebastian is out there somewhere. Right. Now I read, I heard someone say, it's been two months, a young lad who knows his name and can talk. Would it be fine by now? Hold on, hold on, I'm thinking. Wasn't there a case not so long ago where someone had been reported missing and then found something like five years later? And he's sitting outside a store, a shop. He's homeless and he's sitting outside the shop. And that's how they found him. Five years after he went missing, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, two months is nothing. But then there's this case that's just recent. And I believe it was on the day that Sebastian actually went missing that 
another autistic lad who'd been missing not as long as Sebastian. He'd only been missing something like two weeks or three weeks. Or something like that. But he got he got about two hundred miles back where we lived. Why? And from what I read, I don't think his parents were split up. I think there was a, a proper family unit. Right? Because the whoever reported it said the family wasn't as dysfunctional as Sebastian's. Dysfunctional. I wouldn't call it dysfunctional. I'll call it a wreck. Right? So this lad had been missing a couple of weeks, but he managed to get 200 miles away. He's autistic. And he managed to get 200 miles away. So there's hope. There's hope out there for Sebastian. Right? There really is hope. But to get that far to a young lad who's autistic, no shoes, how's he been eating, how's he been drinking, you know what I mean, what's he been doing to get food and drinks, fluid singing, you know what I mean? We do never lied to disappear for a couple of weeks, had money on him. We don't know anything about that. That other lad may have had some money on him. Sebastian's got nothing on him. Nothing. No money, no phone, no shoes, no jacket. Nothing. So, we have to keep hope. We have to stay there with the hope. So, and then, I was going through the comments today, and someone mentioned a case about a four-year-old called Langdon Payne. It's Katie Payne, who's now proud for, her mother and stepfather were mentioned in this case. So I'm going to look into that. But I can't do it. I need to get some full backed up evidence on this because I'm not going to go out and say, yes, they was involved when they may not have been involved. But the other night about the mother, about Katie's mother, it wasn't her mother, it was probably her aunt. I think it was a, a stepfather or a father's sister. She got 90 year, 99 years probation from that family. That is bad. Right. So I'm going to be looking into that case, but it'll probably be... I'll try and do a bit of research over the weekend. I've only got my grandson this weekend, so I'll probably be able to get online a bit more. Or I'll get on my laptop and do a bit of research. Because he'll go in his bedroom or we'll sit in here and he'll watch tab his tablet or he'll have something to eat. Right, I'll, he'll be nosing, come over, see what I'm doing, but he won't mess with me. If he needs me, then I'll just stop what I'm doing and go and sit with him. But anyway, so I am going to be looking into that case. I'll get some research done this week and maybe uh, I'll try and get a little bit done tonight because I've been working on that video. It's not a very long video I've done because with the app I use, I can only do a minute long videos, otherwise I have to upgrade. And I'm not upgrading. I am not paying for anything else. Right? So it's only a minute long, but I'll play it tomorrow. I've just got a few little things I need to add to it. But I'll play that tomorrow and we'll, I'll also be playing the um, feature from last weekend. And I don't know if I'll still be online. I don't think I will because I'm not, as I said, I've got my grandson here tomorrow. So I don't, I don't like being online when he's out here. 
It's not fair on him. But we'll cover the because tomorrow they're doing a, a light up of the bridge. They're lighting up this one bridge for Sebastian. It's uh, still like a symbol of a, a light to show him the way home. You know what I mean? If you can see this, Sebastian, come come home. So that's what they're doing tomorrow night. But the Seth did say is arranged, trying to arrange another vigil for next month. I think they're going to try and do one, one a month. But he's also mentioned, Seth has, that he's got a guy, he's got these dogs, such dogs, fully authenticated, authenticated, right? They've got the packing from all, they were law enforcement and all this lot. They are fully trained dogs. The best. Right? And he's got a, an organisation, I can't remember the name, who do searches. Now, he's waiting on Chris to get back to him, Chris and Casey. And people are going, why is he waiting on them to come back to him? He's waiting on them because um, I think he wants to search around their house, which means going on their property, on their land. Right? Dogs can pick up anything that I know it's been 60 days by then and longer. But you never know, they might pick up on something. So he's waiting on Chris and Katie to get back to him. Well, Seth, you know what? Don't hold your breath because you'll die. That's all I'm going to say. If you're holding your breath for them to get back, you don't. Don't. Because you will not survive. Because they're not going to get back to you. Katie's definitely not. And do you think Chris wants more dogs searching his uh, land and property? Do you really think that? No. I'll be surprised if they come back with a yes. Or, yes, you can do it, but we need law enforcement there as well. Oh, yeah, we need your little sidekicks there, don't we, Chris? Can't do nothing without your little sidekicks of the law enforcement. So, we'll see what happens. But that's what he's waiting on. Not, he's waiting on their permission to do anything. He's waiting on their permission so they can go on their land. And have the dogs go and search it. Now, I have got Seth Rogers' cash app pinned to the top of the chat. Now, Seth is using whatever money he's got in the GoFundMe. He's using for these to get these people to come in, these searches and these whatever. He's using it to pay for them. Whatever money he has, he's using it to find Sebastian. Right? As well as pay for his rent on the house and all that lot. Because a lot of people are going, well, I'm not going to donate to him no more. He's not at work, so he could go back to work if he wanted to. Right? He's using his money to get Sebastian home. One way or the other, he's going to bring Sebastian home. So, I wish people would lay off Seth. Seth, the kids say, oh, well, we think he might be involved. Give me a break. Where on earth is Seth involved? How on earth? This man has gone through how? Did you see six guys before? When uh, Kate 
and CP moved up to Tennessee. Well, before they even moved up to Tennessee, he was living in his car. He had nowhere to live. He went ages without seeing his son. Right? And then he gets somewhere. I suppose he, I can't remember what he said. I don't know if he said he found somewhere to live or what. But he starts seeing his son. And then they move up to Tennessee. Sue's had to make sure he's having to work all the and to get the money together to get up. He's had to put like a year's advance on the rent. He's had to get all that money together so we can move up here. He's had to get, he had no job, so he's had to get a job. Right? Now people are saying, oh, well, Katie paid, helped him move up. Katie helped him get that job. No one helps anyone get a job. No, no one. You do that on your own. You either do a good interview or you do a bad interview. You do it on your own merits. Right? So, and he said he went four months, four months without seeing his son. He phoned him, but he couldn't see him because he was down wherever still. Trying to get the money together, working his ass off down there to get the money together to get the rent for this, so that he can move up here. Oh, and to get another car, get a prop, a better car, right? He said, well, the uh, truck, I then moved up, got the house, paid the deposit on it, got a job, wham. You know what I mean? And this is where he's at now. And now, his son goes missing. So where the hell on earth are people thinking Seth is involved in this? Right? He is at work. He works in a correction facility. In a correction facility, you have criminals. So every doorway, every passageway has cameras. There's, you can't go from one passageway to another without watching is being watched all the way around. and that is because they have women all say watching <clears throat> right so he is on camera from the moment he walked at what six thirty six forty five in the morning Starts work at seven. The clock's out about. He said he, he waited a bit. He didn't get extra help. So he didn't clock out straight away at seven. He stayed a bit just to see if they needed any help because they were short staff. So, so he clocked out and he got in his car about 20 past seven. And that's when you see the missed calls and the messages. So please, everyone, tell me. Tell me how Seth is involved. Oh, okay. He could have hired someone. Hmm. Yeah. Who? Who? You know what I mean? Why would he be searching the woods, the forests, the rivers, the parks, the roadways, everywhere? Caves, you name it. Why would he be putting himself through that? Causing himself an injury through stress related injury because the, the problem was from his neck, which then went into his shoulder. But the pain was going into the shoulder. And that was caused through stress. Who would put themselves through that? He, he wasn't eating, well, he probably still isn't eating properly. He isn't who he can't sleep because when he goes to sleep, all he's got on his mind is Sebastian. All he sees is Sebastian. So he's not eating, he's not sleeping. 
who will put themselves through that if they already know where their son is? Well, I know someone who isn't putting themselves through that. Well, I know two people who aren't putting themselves through that. Why? They are sleeping just fine. You don't hear them saying in their interviews, you know, we don't sleep, we, we haven't had any sleep, I can't sleep every time I close my eyes, I see Sebastian. You don't hear them saying anything like that. But, oh yeah, Seth, yeah, Seth done it. Talk sense, you lot out there who are saying this about Seth. Please, it's Cash App is there. Please, if you can help him, support him. Right? I'll put the GoFundMe link up. In fact, I'll get that and I'll post it in the chat. Right? Hold on. Well, he started this GoFundMe, and I actually commented on this, and I said, Seth did not start the GoFundMe. His sister started the GoFundMe. I'll just put the title again. Fund. Oh, God's sake. It does help if I spell right, doesn't it? Oh, God's sake. Right. In chat, if anyone so. A banner. Right. Hold on. And that is my hair. Oh, I know this cash up off, off the back of me again. Right, and I'll have this scrolling along the bottom. Because I support Seth. Seth. A hundred percent. Right? Because like my mate and some others, all we want is Sebastian home. We just want him home. I don't even want to go to that point where to put in your head what What I had in my head the other week when I watched this FBI files. Because it was stuck in my head and I couldn't sleep that night because of it. And I wish I hadn't watched that FBI files now. I wish I'd turned it off. Well, I did. I did. But it was stuck in my head. And I don't want people to have that in their head. But there's people out there who will, who will know what happens to a body when it's being out in the out in the out in the uh, open. You know what I mean? And I don't want that. I don't want to think of Sebastian like that. I want to think of Sebastian smiling, 
laughing, green tea sort of thing. That's what I want to see. I don't want to think of him lying there or being buried somewhere. And I think if he's in a river, he will be showing up by now. Unless they have him tied down. Right? Because that's what happened to Audrey. What was her name? Can't think of her name. Little Audrey. He tied her to a rock. And the only reason they found her was they got the, the, the people who worked the dam to stop at the water coming through for a certain amount of time. So the river would go lower. That's the only reason I could find her, was by doing that. So unless he's tied down on a boulder or something, his body will come to the top. So, but otherwise I don't think he's in the water. And you know, in my child tours, um, on the page, the pick I put up, said, in all the rumours, there's you'll find some truth. Well, this isn't a rumour, this is fact. Chris said to Seth, if you want to find your son, go to church. And I think he said this just before Easter. Just before Easter, sometime before Easter. And that, that got me, I'm thinking, was he saying to him, but well, you're Catholic, you're religious, whatever, you go to church, go to church. I'm sure your Lord, your God will tell you where Sebastian is. Was he having a dig at him like that? Or was he giving him a clue as to where to look for Sebastian? Could he be, I mentioned this a few weeks ago, was there a funeral at that church from them, just by their school? There's a church. Was there a burial due on that Monday? Right. Did they know about this? They think So did they know about this burial? Did they know there'd be an open grave? Could they have something happened to Seth? They panicked. Could they not have just popped his body in the bottom of that grave? Covered it with a little bit of dirt so, so he wouldn't be seen. And then the coffin goes. I said that. So, and it wouldn't be smelt by the dogs because A, it's six foot deep, slightly more. You know what I mean? So, but if you go, if you listen to the rumours and what people say, like what Chris says, what Katie says, just listen to what they're saying and what people, other people are saying. There's a, there is truth in there somewhere. And if someone is good at reading between the lines and pulling out the information you need from what they're saying, then they can find the truth. They'll find the truth. Right? You've got Deception Detective. You've got Peter Hyatt is really good. They listen to the words people use as well. And... The Deception Detective, I'll put his link in the description at the end. He's good. He doesn't really need to see the video because he just listens to the to what they're saying because he don't go on their reactions. Yeah, he said the only thing he'll pick up on is Duper's Deloitte. I picked up on that twice now. And that was in the first interview, the very first interview they ever did.
Now they don't do that. They've got the <coughs> nudge, nudge, kick under the table signals. You say too much or get back on track. You know what I mean? So they've got their little signals. So they're talking about they know something. I don't know if Chris was there that night when it happened. I don't think he was, to be honest with you. But it just seems a bit... Oh, I've got my head... I don't know why. Oh. Right. It just seems a bit... Um... To... What was I talking about now? Oh, the new to be wink sort of thing. The signals between them. Oh, that was it. They don't do the... The... Oh, I'm crying and look at each other and give a little smirk no more. They've got the signals now. They've worked them out. They don't think we click onto these signals. Katie, Chris, we are. And I've only mentioned it because it's already been mentioned on YouTube and on Facebook pages. So. Why do you think I scour Facebook pages? To make sure that I'm not going to say anything on my lives. I'm doing everything right before I come on a live. I scour all the Facebook pages for any updates. Just to make sure that what I'm going to say isn't going to jeopardise anything. You know what I mean? Like if I find something out, like that stupid smile, I didn't say anything about it at first. And then someone went on a Facebook page the same night and put that clip up of Katie and mentioned it. I thought, well, if you're going to mention it, I'm going to bring it into my life then. Right? Because I didn't pay any attention to that. I knew it was there. I was seeing it. So the next night, I played that video again, and that's when I brought it into my life. So I only bring into my life what is already out there. And someone's saying, when you do interviews or when you're talking about families on your YouTube channels, do you get permission? Hmm. I've got a YouTube disclaimer. If it goes on YouTube, it's fair game. Right? If they go on YouTube and they say something on a YouTube channel, or whatever, fair game. You brought it out there. You put it out there. We're going to run with it. Right? So, no. But, if, say, I have some information about someone someone and that person said such and such it said this right i'd look it up first i find out and if it's true i email i would actually message them and say look i'm doing live tonight and i've got some information i'm putting out there but i want to let you know so if you want to say something about it then please do but I don't do any interviews. I don't, and I won't. Right? Because to me, that's just clip. Right? It's like it's got on there. Uh, Seth Rogers interview. Now, he wasn't planning that. It's just that Seth come up on his, in his chat and then phoned him, right, and spoke to him. So, and interview. But he then changed his title for when it went up on Facebook, on YouTube, to have that in it. So then people are clicking on it because it's got Seth Roberts, uh, Seth Rogers in it. And... Fair dues, you know what I mean? It wasn't planned. I just wouldn't do any planned interviews. I really wouldn't. If 
they want you to phone me up or come in my chat, then fine. And if they want you to come up on my pay up on my panel, I could send them the link. Right, but otherwise I wouldn't do no planned interf interviews. But as I said, I'm just a, a, a pebble in the very, very, very deep, 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 deep ocean. Compared to a lot of these YouTube channels. I've only been doing it since what? Uh, around about the beginning of February, something like that. Or middle of Feb, something like that. Not long before Sebastian went missing, put it that way. Because when I first started, I did a couple of videos, and then I did Elijah Boo, and then Magdalene coming to me. So I was work, looking at her, and then on the same week that Magdalene went missing, Sebastian went missing. So as I said, it was literally within a few weeks, two weeks, of me starting up my channel that I hit on, I come on to this case. So, but, I've heard tonight, and I'll pull it up actually. Let me just close these down first. Now I'm going to leave that up because I'm going to share that. Let me share this. Okay. So the rise of twenty-five so far. Whether they used up it again, I don't know. Right, but they've raised the total. If I can close that. I can now close that too. I'll put his link in the description as well as I wasn't playing. Minutes. So, uh, where was he? You got to see Rogers, not a woman to mess with. Believe me, I don't. I'm just trying to figure out. <laughs> Ouch. The seat in a mini. See it? Will you have to have a little bit to give him that nudge? But where's this? Alright, oh, here we are. I love this lady. Tracy Glover is. Someone's put, I believe she uh Oh. Who's Tracy Glover? Let's see. Oh. Anyway, Tracy Glover was apparently a former member of this group. This and she put Tracy Glover. She acts very polite in my ways. I'd have had an F in front of that. He was asked if he knew anything about the was putting Sebastian through. He had tried multiple times to So I think he had tried. I think that time when he said a year ago, planning to take him a year ago, 
I think, I don't know, no, no, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, we'll work it out. So that's why I said to Sebastian, no, we'll leave it for now then. That goes for now. They did leave it for, for them. But they manipulate people. If you can't say something, shut your mouth. I'm tired of all the negativity and it is not constructive and does not help to bring Sebastian home. Too right there, Robbie. Just... We are all very tired and our tempers and nerves are very short. I think you're getting Because this will be a bleep, 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 bleep. He really will give. If people cannot say things that act to find in Sebastian, they should just keep to themselves. I will not tolerate you trying to make Seth look like a bad guy because he has been nothing but an excellent father to his son. Put her in her place. And I'm all for rubbing there because Seth has done. And then, what was the other one? I can't find it again. Now this, oh, let's just see me. Now, I want to know what the hell is going on. Because narc drivers are being out there two weekends now. Two weekends is gave up to go and search for this lad, for Sebastian. CJ has been with him, right? CJ runs another YouTube channel. I don't know the full name of it. I do, I do subscribe. So I'm going to have to look it up first. It says, due to misinformation, safety concerns, and York Divers will no longer be searching for Sebastian Roger. All leads from this point forward should be sent to the all the law enforcement. Sorry, but our safety has to come first. And someone put in here, this was the, uh, the post itself before this call. Why does every single search group end up pulling out of this case? Who keeps threatening it? And why are they getting away with it? What the hell is going on behind it? Now, three groups that I that he knows of to withdraw. Well, one was saying, what was the other one? Saying, oh, I can't think of the second, third one. And now uh, the other one. Is, what do all these groups know that we don't know? But maybe someone should start a new search group and see who specifically is threatening people. Because maybe they might threaten a new group and we can expose them. But why don't not divers just expose them? You know what I mean? Just expose them. Expose their backsides. And if it even, even worse, expose them. Because something is seriously going on for search groups to keep you found, you found the foundation. That was the other one. Let's drop search about Sebastian Rock's case. Right? What the hell is going on?
consistently on that. Right? Are they going to threaten this organisation, this group that Seth is bringing in? Right? Now, me personally, I bring them in anyway. And I will just get permission from the neighbour down from him and the neighbour from up next up to him. So, and start from their properties around. Not go on their properties, just go on the neighbour's properties and get their permission to do so. Right? And then it will be forcing Kate and CP, KP and CP, to... Okay. The neighbours are letting them search their gardens and their house and they're around their houses. This is not looking good. But then again, we might get Chris threatens Seth again. Look, you're making us look bad. No, we're not, he's not making it. Fuck all. Pardon my French. You are doing it. So you need to get back to Seth and say, yes, that's fine. Let us know and we can be there, be it on a weekend, when Chris can be there. You know what I mean? Even if law enforcement has to be there. But if law enforcement then starts saying, no, but you don't need to go and search there, I'd be going, old harm, old dog. Why are you stopping us from searching there? If there's nothing to be hid, what? Why won't you let us search them? And I would call their asses out. I really would. I would actually have a YouTuber with me. One I trusted. Be it JLR or just in on TikTok. Right, you don't need to go live, just do a video. Video it. And then they're, going, they're not going to like it because the police will go, oh, God, that goes on video here. We can't stop them searching. We've got to let them search. But I'll definitely have someone doing a video of this search if law enforcement are there as well. You know what I mean? Because I don't trust that law enforcement. There's something not right. As I said, we need someone, a sheriff, sheriff who got the ponies to come in and stand up to that family. Because this law enforcement just keep backing away. Why? And it's like, you get these groups, like Knock Divers. CJ, his channel, has been out there for weeks now. Weeks. Right? Now, all of a sudden, they're getting the threat. Are they getting too close for comfort? I remember one search the gig a couple of weekends ago. Right? There's filming it. There's live. And the one who's filming it saying, I can hear um, a drone. Now, I reckon that was a police. I was going at first maybe for safety reasons, right? But now I'm thinking, no, no. They're watching them with their drones because if the, I think they get too close to somewhere and I'd have to mark it on my map. I've been marking it down on the map where I last searched to their... to the, to the foot. You know what I mean? And I'll be thinking, well, we've got done all these, but now we're getting here. And we're getting the threats. Uh, what's here? What's here for them to threaten us now and put our safety in? You know what I mean? Because CJ isn't one. I can't imagine CJ being one to be worried about threats. All knocked out, all tried try from knock divers. So it had to be somewhat serious for them to back off. It has to be somewhat serious. 
Okay. That's why I say it's law enforcement. That's just my opinion. By the way, before anyone starts jumping on me and saying, oh, well, this YouTuber is saying it's law enforcement giving out the war uh, threats. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's my opinion. But some big people like JLR, he backed off because he didn't like the way UCN was working and he was getting reported to the police. So once you report JLR to law enforcement, it's like picks his ears up and thinks, hmm, what don't they want me to know? So he will dig into that organisation and that's what he did. I mean, they didn't like it. Right? And I literally just put out there what they really are. Right? And how they lie through the back teeth. How when those on Nancy Grace, say the original United Navy, United Cajun Navy, you know they are. Cajun Navy 2016 is the original group. UCN, United Cajun Navy, is just another side, another group using their name but with the United in front. There's loads of these Cajun Navies, but Cajun Navy 2016 is the original group. So when they was on Nancy Grace and they said, yes, we're the, United, we're the original group, there's many fractions that use our name. I'm sitting here watching it, and I'm watching it on my TV at the time, I'm going, BS! Well, I didn't actually say BS, I said the actual words. Right? And I'm thinking, what a load of BS! Why are you lying? Did you not know Nancy Grace can do her research? You're lying to Nancy Grace, who's got researchers galore. You could find out at a click of a button who you really are. Right? Now she's got a tea thing to set uh, Chris because Chris you know, uh, refused to do um, the polygraph with her, stating that he was doing one with law enforcement. But did he actually do one with law enforcement? We don't know. He says he did, and he come back cleared. Where's the proof? Right? Where's the proof you was cleared? Law enforcement haven't come out and said, yes, he's done his polygraph, and it is clear. They haven't come out and said, so at all. So, there's that. So, something is seriously going on. In my opinion, someone in law enforcement or someone around that way, maybe. I mean, you know who's got contacts in the law enforcement? Oh, yeah. Oh. I'm not going to say the name. Right? You know they have. So, is it coming from them? We don't know, but it's just weird. These groups are backing off. And it's true. I think someone needs to set up a group, a search group. Right? But this search group has to have the cojones to stand up and back off we, or stop our search. Then, back off and get home safely. Right? Give the information to... Put the information out there online, who it is, who's threatening them. Because law enforcement said they hadn't had any reports of any threats come through that time. Seth said law enforcement uh, he'd reported all these 
threats towards the Avengers. He reported it. So that's that standing, standing there saying I've had no reports. But Seth said he's giving them all the reports. So who's lying? I can't say being Seth. Why would he lie? Why would he lie? put his searches at the saying, here, yeah, put the report in and everything. Why would he lie? Because that's putting your searches at risk. Because then you think, oh, they put a report in. Well, we told them not to. We best go and sort these out. He's putting these people at risk. So, I can't see him lying. But look, if the family, then yes, they will say, oh, yeah, we've had no reports. And then someone said the other day, today, I'm going to come about, someone said something about law enforcement CBI. About what do they know and what don't they know. Well, in they said, law enforcement say, is that why? It's just waiting for that one big tip to come in. And bust this case, bust this case wide open. And I said, what does that tell you? Well, in my opinion, it tells me they've got feck all. They've got no, not no criminal investigation searches. So they've got no forensic ability. Probably too late now. Right? The, even though Chris wasn't there. Hold on. Yes, I believe what Chris... It's like Chris said in that one interview, he didn't... He didn't expect it to take off or kick deep. No. You was expecting to go. Yeah, he just walked out of the house. I don't know why. Got no shoes on, but I just walked out. Now, someone in my comments last night come up with a brilliant. She said, if he walked out that house on the night time, right, there'd be dew on the grass because the grass gets damp on the night time, yes? I've been out in the, on, out in the grass many times running out. I was washing in when I lived down in Birmingham. Oh my god, I forgot to get the washing in. It's like 9, 10 o'clock at night, and I'm going out there, throwing it all in my basket just to get it back in the house because I didn't want it out there all night. Right? And the grass is damp. And it's definitely damp in the winter. So, would you not have some footprints on the grass? Putting that out there for anyone who's watching on repeat, replay. You have footprints on the wet, damp grass. I don't know how many times I walked on damp grass when I was a child or when I've been camping or, you know what I mean? Because we used to go camping as, as children and we used to have to go from bottom of one field through a uh, cutting in the hedge, a pathway, and across another field to the bathrooms. And we used to run around, uh, up and along there, with no shoes on. The grass was damp. You'd have footprints. So, was there any footprints? Well, did they take any photos of any footprints? No, because I just thought, I was just too long away. It's just left home. Oh, we've got a dog that's trapped up, trapped up to the uh, retention pond at the builder's side. Oh, it's a false, false hit. How long have I think a dog? You've heard it. Say on the... 
on that um, dispatch call. The guy said the dog jumped into the pond, took him all the way to that retention pond, and he jumped into the pond. So how can that be a false hit? Please, I'd love to explain to me a false hit. I don't understand that. Right? Now, I'm, I think that's a false hit because I just want... Chris and Katie just want them to believe he just walked away from home. Right? And they was hoping that it would just be looked at that. He just walked away from home. Yeah, he's autistic. Uh, putting down an Amber Alert book. We know how many Amber Alert cases there is. You've only got to go on the page. How many Amber Alerts are out there where, which have not been highlighted? Right? But they forgot one thing. They forgot about Seth. Seth not, was not going to let this go. He will not let this go until he gets his son home. He will do anything he has to do to get his son home. So, you forgot about him, didn't you, Chris and Katie? You was hoping the police, and they would have done, if it hadn't been for Seth pushing this, this case would have died down after the first week. Right? But then you did that stupid interview, which piqued everyone's, caught everyone's attention then on YouTube. So it's your own fault in one way. You shouldn't have done that interview. If you wanted this case to die down, just go away quietly. You shouldn't have done that interview. You shouldn't have done the one on that YouTube's page. I know the name, but I'm not going to say it. Of course, I've got to put a link in again. Well, you shouldn't have done that first interview with the YouTuber. You shouldn't have done one with the new people. You, you know what I mean? You shouldn't have done none of them interviews. If you wanted this case to die down, and it would have done, but as I said, you did those interviews, you caught everyone's attention then. You got everyone, oh, hold on. What's she saying? What did, she, what did he say? You know what I mean? And we was picking up on things you were saying that did not make sense. So it's your own fault this is still going on. 60 days later. And it didn't die down like you wanted it to. It's your own fault. So... Sorry, there's something knocking on my table. Um, so, yeah, Chris said he didn't expect it to take off like it did. He really was hoping the law enforcement would have just dropped it, which they did. And they said they're looking into a, a, an investigation side of it. And if it wasn't for that interview they did, well, those two interviews they did, YouTubers, like there was myself, Thread time, um, Duchess, and um, I think another one or two. There's about five of us by then in the first week talking about this, right? And then Duchess put her interview out on the, was it the Sunday night or the Saturday night, and then. And you did that interview with the TV news reel. Big mistake. You got yourself to blame for this. It would have just died down quietly because there wouldn't have been no information from the police coming out. Nothing would have been coming out. But you had your ego got to you, didn't it, Chris? Your ego got to you. You had to go on these YouTube channels. You had to go and do these interviews with the new people. 
Seth digging. Seth didn't do an interview until the interview that you do. The Friday. And you didn't it then because um who was it? Oh god, I can't think Nick Barris was at the vigil and seeing him. I spoke to him. And just by that chance, I had his cameraman there as well. You know what I mean? But he spoke to Seth. And that was the interview where Seth said, Sebastian doesn't belong to no one. But, God, but my God is my son and I want him back. Right? That got everyone, oh my lord, that got to you. That really got to everyone that did that interview. So everyone then started rallying around Seth. They really did. Right? But they didn't know how to get in touch with him about the searching. And then JLR did um, a video where he went on a search with them. Right? At this park or somewhere like that. And then, I think it was a Wednesday or a Thursday. Then on the Friday, he did another search with them. And there's loads of searches out that day, loads. Loads and loads. Then on the Saturday, they had UCN coming and joining them. And there's out searching then. And then those kicked off because it was federal land. And then I was doing these little searches here and there with Seth, right? And his searches he stood by him all the way. They're still doing now, they still go out now and hang. They're not searching as much, but they go out and, and put flyers out. You know what I mean? They're doing whatever they can without putting themselves in danger because it's when they was out on the searches, even when they was putting flies out, they was getting uh, followed. And he didn't want to put his, his uh, volunteers out in danger. Right, but he's got his steadfast volunteers who stand with him. Right? And he's got Sebastian's army behind him. All the people who can't be there. All the people who sit at home and just can't be there. Can't go out and help. Can't do anything. But just pray that Sebastian think is home. Brought home. You know what I mean? He's got all these people. He's got people from the UK. There's me. There's other people in the UK. Other YouTubers in the UK who are talking. About Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. So and all he says is just keep his name and his picture out there. And that's what we're doing. But it annoys me when I see posts like this. And I'm thinking, why are they being scared? Who's threatening them? That's what I want to know. I want to know who... Is threatening these groups. Right? But please, if you can help Seth, if you, like, some people go, oh, well, he told us to F off. Well, I'm sorry, that was a week ago. That was a week ago. Get over it. And as I said, if you can't put your egos to one side and come together and help find Sebastian, then F off. As I say, but he says it in another way. Right? If you're going to be one of these people to say, I've got your son, go away. Right? I've seen your son being put into a car. Go away. If you've got that evidence, hand law enforcement. Take them on a chat. Some chat and say, I saw your, uh, Sebastian getting into the back of an SUV. You don't care. <laughs> what about law enforcement and TBI? Why haven't you told them this? Yes. That's 
why it's not showing the video. But I don't think it is because it was five up and that would mean Katie would leave had to leave the house with Sebastian alive at five just to buy the school it was apparently so about five fifty five. Yeah, five to six, get in the car, drive out, drive up to the car, get Sebastian to go in the SUV, then come back, phone Chris, search on the phone records, and then phone the police. It would be on door camera that she left at that time. Someone would get caught on their door camera or their, even that, House at the bottom of the road, which apparently caught the garbage truck. I'm still iffy about that now. Right? That camera will have caught her leaving with Sebastian in the car at 5.55, 56 or whatever. That camera will have caught him. If you can get a, a garbage truck at, three, at whatever time in the morning, then you've got her car driving past. So they have all that on evidence if that was true. So I don't think it is true. I think there was a handover, but I think it was after six o'clock. And I think it was while she was on the phones to Chris, she's got in the car. She's already got Sebastian in the back of the car or the boot of the car. She drove around, like she said, up towards the school. Several people now have said they've seen, well, one person I know of has said they've seen her car outside the school. From that 5.58, right? But they've seen her car parked about the school. So how do you, you know, if they've seen her car parked, did they did not see Kate at the time? That's what makes me think. So, but there was a hangover. I seriously believe somewhere from when I left that Texas Roadhouse Sunday evening to about 10 past 6 Monday morning, there was a hangover. Right. Now, apparently, he said he phoned the sheriff's office at half 6, six well, 6.20, he said. We had to come through at 6.30. 6.39. People are saying the sheriff's office isn't open till 7. But the dispatch call says the call come through at 6.39. And the police were at her house by 6.45, 6.50. Right? So, she had a bit of time to get to the school, do a handover and get back before the police got there. So I definitely believe there was a handover, but I don't believe it was then. Because this guy's saying he saw Sebastian climb in, get into the back of the car. Now that means Sebastian was alive. I'd like to think that. I really would like to believe that is true. But why wasn't her car caught on the home security camera by that corner house? You know what I mean? Doesn't make sense. Law enforcement are not talking, which is not helping. It's not helping that law enforcement are not talking. If this these two videos of like of him walking out the steakhouse with his mum and the full proper video to the garbage truck. If it's got no importance to the case, why aren't they releasing those videos? They did be royally strange. They video they had him on camera walking down the street all the way down. They had him on every but some of the county won't release two videos. What are they hiding? 
This is why Seth wants to FBI. I believe. I really do. And as I said, I need to show the Kahoolies, Kahoonies, to come in and stand up to them. Simple as. Otherwise, this case will be forgotten about. Not by me, won't be. And not by other YouTubers. Trev Time won't let this, this case go by his side. He is. No cases, but he won't. Right? He will not. I don't think anyone wants this to become another Summer Moon New Child Wounds case. Where three years later, we still don't know anything about it. We still don't know where Sebastian is. And there's still been no. Arrests, mate. This is just ridiculous now with TBI and law enforcement in Tennessee. Even while Australian parents are questioning the validity, validity or whatever it is of law enforcement down there as to they're putting it off as he, he was drunk and he fell in the river. But how did he lose his trousers and his shoes and his wallet? How did he lose all them before falling in the river? It doesn't make sense. And yeah, we can t we can discard we could probably discard the fact that there was no lung water in his lung lungs. Right, so it means he didn't drown. But sometimes that pat, that muscle in your throat can close up when you're in a panic mode. It can close up, and it will stop water getting through, and you suffocate. And it's what they call a dry drowning. Well, I don't think that's the case in this. I don't. I think something happened to him before he hit the water and that guy's got no trousers on, no shoes on. Right? A bit too much. So she's put, she pushed for a second autopsy. Because she's not happy with the first one. And how law enforcement are just trying to push up and get a car sort of thing. You know, these two families, they're separated. The mother and father will separate, but they came together as one from the very beginning and worked together as one. But Chris and Katie wasn't working together. Uh, Seth and Katie was not working together as one from day one. And they're not going to work together now. She's not going to work with him. She knows he knows her. He knows, She knows he's got... So much information on it. He knows when she knows when that he knows she's lying. She's holding something back. She's not telling us the law enforcement the full story. And law enforcement aren't pushing her on it. Why? We've given so many red flags in these interviews. So many. I'm running out of red flags. Um, but Seth doing an interview the other night with uh, Law, um, um, but again, he was mainly saying about talking about that interview with uh, the man he is. So he was really, oh, I've got the spanning wrong there. He was listening to him, to what he had to say. And I think he took a lot away from that, in, that, that interview. Seth took a lot away from with him. He knows Kate is not going to work with him. Christ's sake, if she's going to work with him, she can stay at the house. She wouldn't have gone down to Mississippi or Memphis, wherever, in the five-wheeler. You know what I mean? She wouldn't have done that. She just stayed at home to work with Seth, which she hasn't. 
What's the meaning of working with Seth? Oh, I'll only work with you when I'm up here on the weekends. No. I need to do searches around your house. I need your permission. I can't wait until you start to come home. This is valuable time now wasting. It's now been a week. I think it was a week. Was it on a Friday they did the... Or Saturday? Coming up to a week since they had this unite. We will unite. And we are working together. They've done feck all. And we knew this. We knew it. Chris is at work, okay. He can't do anything in the week. But he can on the night times. They could go out and put poster flyers out around Mississippi or Memphis or wherever. But I'm not even doing that. I'm not doing nothing. So, not today. We will see. Now, I will be on tomorrow night, but only for half an hour. And it's just for Sebastian. It's just for Sebastian tomorrow. 60 days tomorrow. So, I will be showing this video of him that I've just put together. And I'll also be showing um, Vigil. I'm going to write it down here now. The Vigil from last weekend. Video. And I'll even show, try and forget those two little videos of him. Two little videos of him. I've got one. I'm sure it was on my Facebook page. I just can't find it. But I will find it. And we will watch that as well. And the other one is on the short one. Right? But it's just a small one. It's so contagious. This smile is just so contagious, it's unbelievable. So anyway, I will be on tomorrow. Uh probably about between eight and eight thirty tomorrow. But as I said, it'll only be for half an hour. And it's something someone mentioned on a Facebook page that all YouTubers could do. So yes, this is one thing I can do for Sebastian. Right? And It'll have his picture on there, it'll have video. <laughs> and I'll try and get some clips of Seth talking about um, Sebastian when he's being on the um, live. Like that first interview, I'll show you that. Um, we'll look at every interview after that. Before he started getting pissed off with Chris and Katie. Um, the way he used to talk about it. That is heartwarming. So I'll try and get clips of them. And show them tomorrow. Because it's all about Sebastian. All about Sebastian tomorrow. Okay. So I'm going to leave it up there. It's an early one tonight for a change. So I'm going to leave it there, and okay, I'll get the right one. It's not as going to show you on the other one. Oh yeah, I showed you, you didn't know, yes. Yeah. yeah, I showed you that. So, till tomorrow, I will see you tomorrow. And I'd say it is Sebastian. And only Sebastian Wayne Rogers. And my heading for that video will be Say my name, Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. That's all I'm going to put on my pick for, to for tomorrow's live. Say my name. Okay, so till tomorrow, I'll see you. Have a good day, have a good evening. Bye. And, oh, 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 oh. and uh, I'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you for being here.